Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so, so excited to have my first ever sponsored video for you, which is a review of the isometric city building PC game Nebuchadnezzar. Some of you may know this from my previous video on video games and archaeology, but the Impressions slash Sierra video game Pharaoh and Cleopatra, which is also an isometric city building game, was a like huge formative part of sparking my interest in archaeology and ancient Egypt. Egypt as a child. I still play this game as an adult. It's like my go-to comfort game. And I've also played quite a few of the other games in this series, including Caesar 3, Zeus and Poseidon, Rise of the Middle Kingdom, and Children of the Nile, which was kind of a pseudo sequel to Pharaoh, but in a very different kind of visual style, which I did not like as much as the original. The huge boom that we're seeing right now with indie gaming and the fact that a generation of kids who grew up playing those games are now adults and some of them are game developers means that there are now several successor games in development or coming soon to the gaming market that are very much inspired by this original series. And today we're going to be looking at slash reviewing one of them. Full disclosure, as I said, this is a sponsored video. I was given a copy of this game in exchange for a review. There was no stipulations about whether a review had to be like positive or negative, And I think I've given a pretty balanced one. I am going to be putting a link in the description box for the game on Steam if you would like to purchase it, but it's not an affiliate link and I don't make any money off of you clicking that. Before we get started, if you'd like to consider supporting my channel and helping me continue to make new videos about archaeology please consider either subscribing or sitting through, you don't have to click on, but sitting through the single ad that is going to be midway through this video. Okay guys, let's dig in. So a little bit of background and context to this game, because we all know that archaeologists love context. <laughs> this game was made by Nepos Games, which is a company of two developers based in Prague that was founded in 2019. They've worked on several other games, but this is really their passion project. By the time this video goes up, the game will be launched on Steam and will be available for $19.99 US dollars, which I think personally is quite a reasonable price. Today's review is going to cover some of the archaeological and gaming aspects of this game, talking about the differences between the original Impressions games and this one's, the things that I absolutely loved about the games, and the things that I think could be improved. There was nothing that I think I would say I actively disliked about this game, and it's also something where I think it's set up so that there can be lots of mods added to it, and also the developers can continue to improve it as they get feedback and things go along, so I think that it's not set in the way that it is now, there's always room for it to be improved. I have to say that I was really, really excited when I saw that this game was in production. I think that these kinds of games are great for teaching people in general, very much about history and doing it in a way that's a bit more engaging than having somebody lecture at you or reading about it in a book. And games like this that are like city building games, but set in the past, I think teach you a lot about history, but also a lot about things like budgeting, management, <laughs> planning, <laughs> organization, all these kinds of things which are kind of soft skills. I don't think a lot of people think that they learn when they play these games, but are skills that you need in order to really master this kind of a game. So I received the game about a week before I started filming this review, and in that time I've spent 19 and a half hours playing it. Keep in mind that I work at like a nine to five job and I also try to do other things outside of my work hours. So the fact that I put that much time into it is a real sign that I liked it and also that this game can be a real time suck if you let it. <laughs> Anybody expecting this to be a carbon copy of the Impressions game is going to be disappointed at the start. But I think that despite that, people should still at least give it a chance or give it a go. I know that when I started playing as somebody who's played the Impressions games, particularly Pharaoh, for over 20 years, I was very struck by the differences between the two. But after I played it for a while, I stopped noticing those things as much. We're going to start by talking about the biggest differences between the two games. But before anybody starts complaining about some of these things, I want people to keep in mind that there's a really big difference between a indie developer company of two people with an indie developer budget making this kind of a game versus a team in a gaming studio that has a much bigger budget. And I think some of these differences are because of that. And I do think that if the game manages to be a financial success, some of these things are things that will change. So I think the biggest thing that people will notice 
is the amount of levels that are or campaigns that are in this game. Pharaoh and Cleopatra as a total package has over 53 levels that you can play throughout the entire game. Nebuchadnezzar has 14. And there might be some people saying that that's not quite enough, they really should have more. This is definitely one of the things that I think they plan to expand once they get a bit of income <laughs> into the game and they can start doing things like expansions. Like I said, I've played roughly 20 hours of this game and I've made it to level seven. So I'm about halfway through and I'm not even close to finishing level seven. So I don't think that those 14 campaigns are things that like you're gonna be able to finish the entire thing in a week if you're playing like me, a casual player who's not doing it all day every day. Another big change is the fact that you can set the walker routes of your like service delivery people and that buildings have radiuses to them <laughs> which is probably the biggest adjustment from the pharaoh games and is honestly one that i quite liked in pharaoh and cleopatra and some of the other impressions games the routes that the people who deliver services to your citizens like food water healthcare, etc is set by how you plan your roads and through the indiscriminate use of roadblocks <laughs> to try and direct people to where you want to go. You don't really have a choice. They have a set route and you need to make sure that that route accommodates everything you need. This game is very different. You are allowed to set the route of the people that you want to walk different places. And I personally like love that aspect of the game. You don't need roadblocks because people aren't going where they're not supposed to. Another thing that's very different is building radii, I guess is the plural of radius. So when you're in the game, you'll notice there is like a blue square around each building when you put it down like an industrial building. And the limits of that square are how far the walker delivery people from that building can go. So they can't go any farther past that building to deliver goods or anything. So for example, if you want to have a farm, it has goods that it needs to offload that need to get to your citizens so they can use it. And so you need to build a warehouse within the radius of that farm so that the goods can get to it. And then you also might need to make sure that that warehouse is in within the vicinity of a market so that the people from the market can come get the goods to deliver it to the populace. The one way that you can get around this in terms of getting goods all around the city is caravans, which is great, but this applies to like all services buildings. It, this just adds another level to your city planning that that definitely takes some time to master. I definitely am in the phase of still learning how to best do that and my cities are not nearly as pretty and well laid out as I'm sure they could be. Next we have one of the things that I think might deter quite a few people but I would really encourage you to not let it discourage you from playing the game is the fact that there are no gods or military influences or aspects of the game. You build temples to gods in the game but they are not actively involved in your city like they are in the impressions games. This game is purely about city building with some trading thrown in to give you some revenue to continue building your city. You don't have to worry about things like gods causing natural disasters like flooding and earthquakes. You don't have to send people away for military campaigns. You don't have to worry about getting invaded. You don't have to build city fortifications, etc. You don't have any festivals or offerings that you have to give to the gods. The fact that those aren't present in my mind doesn't actually make this game any easier or less complex to play. There's still plenty to do and figure out and keep you occupied while you're playing the game. Additionally, the developers have commented that if the game is successful in future, they might look into putting a military expansion pack into the game. However, while I will say I don't think it necessarily took away from my gaming experience, I did miss those two aspects, mostly because of the level of immersion it gives you in the game. It makes it more realistic because things like religion and the gods having an impact on your daily life were a thing that Mesopotamians believed in. And also several of the historic figures, including the king who the game is named after, are very famous conquerors in history. And military campaigns and conquering and empires were a very big chunk of this history. So I think it's a little bit lacking without that aspect in terms of it being very historically realistic. There is no voice acting in the game. I think this is probably entirely due to budget. In Pharaoh, all of the missions get read out to you and if you click on people, they talk to you in the city. There are only two difficulty modes in the game, easy and normal. Personally, uh, I don't think you need anything much harder than normal for most people at this point. Everyone's gonna be a beginner coming to this game and I found it challenging enough just on that setting. The last big different aspect that I'm gonna talk about is the ability to custom build your monuments. 
So in games like Pharaoh and Cleopatra, Rise of the Middle Kingdom, etc., when you build a monument, you kind of put it down, you get resources to it, people build it, and it's already predetermined how it's going to look at the end. In this game, you have the option to either build a preset monument, it's very similar style, but you also have the option to custom build your monument, in which you can do things with colors and decorations, windows, stairs, etc., to make your monuments look however you want, which I think is a really interesting aspect of this game. Personally, I have not tried that yet in the game because I'm trying to get a handle on everything else, but it's definitely something I want to explore as I continue to play. Now we're going to get into the things that I like slash loved about this game. So similar to the Impressions games, these games take you through time. So you start at a very early period and you end up in a later period. And that you go through like the evolution of civilizations as you play the game. With each level that you play in this game, there is an introduction not only to the period that you are playing in, but also a little bit about the city slash site that you're going to be building on. I was really impressed with the depth of the information that they provide you. I don't know if everyone's actually going to end up reading everything. They might not all be like me, but personally, I really liked that that aspect was included if people wanted to read it. When I saw that the first levels of the game were based in the pre-Pottery Neolithic, a and B periods, I was like seriously impressed. I haven't heard anybody talk about the PPNA slash B since I was an undergraduate. All the buildings, the animations, all the detail that you get to see, they felt very true to the time period that they are representing, even if we don't know perhaps exactly how these buildings would have looked because none of them have survived to modern day completely intact to how they were a couple thousand years ago. But I really felt like it felt true to the period, especially loved the colors because I just feel like when you visit an archaeological site today it seems very bland when it comes to its color scheme. It's usually stone, most of it's tumbled down, and while perhaps very impressive to look at it just, you know, it doesn't stand out too much from the landscape. And so as a result we used to, th I think some people think that people were very dull in terms of their color palette way back when. When in fact ancient people loved color just as much as we do. There are probably some cases where people would consider them to be like garish in terms of how much color they enjoyed using. And while their color palette that they had to choose from for paint was perhaps more limited than what we have access to today, they really went to town with what they did have. <laughs> so I really enjoyed that scene in the game, particularly the glazed bricks that you see on some of the monuments and how the monuments aren't just like these blocks of mud bricks, like they have color to them. I just, ugh, I really enjoyed that. Next one is a bit of a, a gamer thing, but one of the additions that they've made to this game is an auto speed up button. So playing on a, with a keyboard, if you press the button E, it fast forwards four times the normal time that the game plays in and it, and you can just press that and then when you take your finger off it slows back down to normal. You can change the time other ways but this is like a temporary thing and I just oh I love that button. I wish that they had something like that in Pharaoh and Cleopatra where I was just constantly pressing the plus and minus keys to speed up or slow down time all the time. There's also obviously a pause button like there is in Pharaoh as well, it's just a space bar. Another archaeological feature I really loved was to see the inclusion of tablet and seal workshops in the game. I was impressed by that and the fact that they differentiated between the two and they just didn't lump all cuneiform clay writing into one thing. Cuneiform I think is a very underappreciated, underpromoted writing style. Like everyone knows what hieroglyphics are, but not everyone knows what cuneiform is. And personally, I have a bit of an attachment to it because I actually learned how to write a small amount of cuneiform while I was at school learning to be an archeologist. In case you haven't seen it yet, I think they're on my Instagram, but I don't know if they've ever featured in my videos yet. But I have these tablets at my house that I've painted. I, they didn't come like this, they were white. These are actually from my Babylonian class that I took at school and are my midterm and exam tests that, for that course. During class we would use plasticine but for our tests we got potter's clay and the professor would take them away, get them fired, and then you got your test back once you were finished. So I decorated these a while ago to look like lapis lazuli and put the lettering in gold. So this is my little personal cuneiform tablet that I have and I'm, I'm so happy to see that these have made it into the game. Seals and cuneiform tablets are 
the leftover writing of these civilizations that lived in Mesopotamia. So they're very, very important for us to be able to learn about their culture and civilization retrospectively. They're also great because they don't just talk about the deeds of the really famous people. They cover everything from historical propaganda texts to mundane administrative lists of what things are due to the temple. They also get used for poetry. They are the equivalent of, they are kind of the Mesopotamian equivalent of paper and luckily for us they're much more <laughs> amenable to surviving millennia because they're made out of hardened clay which does not biodegrade like paper. Cuneiform tablets are the equivalent are used for writing pretty much everything whereas seals are a bit more specific in that they were used more as a kind of personal signature as well as being used as jewelry or perhaps a magical amulet. When you start the game, the first couple levels are tutorials to teach you how to learn the game, which is definitely needed. I don't think this is something you can necessarily jump into without having those tutorials. I really loved that the guide in these tutorials is the Mesopotamian hero god Gilgamesh. He is like the original folk hero of Mesopotamia who later became deified into a god. The poem, The Epic of Gilgamesh, all about his life and adventures, is around 4,000 years old and is one of the earliest notable pieces of literature we have as well as the second oldest religious text in the world at this current moment in time. The Epic of Gilgamesh is about Gilgamesh going on like journeys and learning to do stuff so the fact that he's like helping you through your journey of learning to play the game I just Oh, I loved that. I thought that was really great. That was a really nice touch, I thought. Last thing we're gonna talk about here is the grid. So this is an isometric city building game. You build things on a grid in the game. This is the same as Pharaoh and Cleopatra. Something slightly different to those games is you can actually see it in some parts. It's not laid over the entire game. It's not super obvious. It's quite subtle. It kind of blends into the background so you don't even notice it sometimes. But personally, I found it really helpful to be able to see that for when I was building. So that was something that I really appreciated that they added to the game. Okay, now these are things that I think that the game could improve upon personally. This is just my opinion and in no way is meant to hate on the game because I think as is pretty obvious I really enjoyed playing it. The help and like guides that you can access after Gilgamesh disappears I think could use with a bit of improvement. This is something that I think is just going to come as the game comes out and people play it and figure out how it works. I did find that the learning curve for this game was particularly steep at points even as somebody who's quite experienced with playing these kinds of games. I definitely struggled at a few parts and I couldn't figure out how I was struggling necessarily from the help guides. In particular, the last tutorial level after Gilgamesh leaves and is like, all right, you kind of know everything, see you later. I had to restart it like over five times. Partially that's just because I'm picky, but I was really struggling to complete that level and I couldn't really figure out why for quite a while. It does mean, however, that when you do finally manage to finish something, you feel really accomplished. This is something that I think is going to be helped by the fact that once the game's out, people are going to be writing help and guides. So it'll be really nice once people will start sharing how they've built their cities and managed to successfully complete goals, etc. The second thing which I keep finding myself wishing for when I'm playing is the lack of an undo button. So in the impressions games, you would have a button that say you put down a house and then you're like, oh, I don't want to put that there anymore. You just press undo and it undoes your last action. This game doesn't have that. You can just remove things, but it costs you money. I just wish that there was an undo button that didn't penalize you by taking money away from your budget, especially at the earlier levels when you haven't figured out how to make lots of money yet. The other thing I would like to see in this game going forward is a bit more diversity in the kind of monuments that you get to build. At the current moment in time, there are three types of monuments that you can build. Temples, a palace, and the hanging gardens of Babylon which you can only build in the last level of the game. Especially when it comes to funerary stuff, they actually had similar buildings to mastabas that you see in Egypt. And while they didn't have the pyramids, they also have their own historic monuments that are famous. <laughs> For example, I really would have loved in the level on Ur if you would have had to build the Royal Cemetery of Ur, which is very famous and has a lot of 
treasures in it so like that aspect where you build a tomb and then you have to fill it with treasures i really wish that they would incorporate that a little bit more as well things like you know the ishtar gate at babylon having to build that at that level would be a nice inclusion so i just think that there's a bit more scope to have more than just these three things last but not least i would love if they could improve or add some more voice acting and music so voice acting i think is pretty self-explanatory again it adds to the immersion of the game music is something that i will admit i'm being particularly picky about and is not something that i would necessarily have expected anybody else to really notice when they're playing this game there are several tracks that play in the background and two of them in particular i noticed were very modern sounding there are some other tracks in it that are very nice there's particularly one of like a woman singing that with an oud playing in the background which i, I really enjoyed that one and the reason this stood out to me in particular is because a like i love the music of pharaoh and cleopatra the other reason this stood out to me is because one of my like favorite albums of all time of music to listen to is the flood by the liar ensemble this album uses remade slash period accurate instruments like the golden liar of ur some of the songs in here are parts of the epic of gilgamesh which i've already mentioned including ishtar's descent into the underworld and the majority of the album is actually sung in ancient sumerian and babylonian and there's some parts in English, but the majority of it isn't. Personally, I think that the music in it is absolutely beautiful and ethereal and lovely to listen to, even if you can't understand the words. And personally, I'd like to think that it's probably quite close to how this music might have sounded in ancient days, but like I said, there's no way we can ever really know. I would love if something similar to that could be more included into the music of the game, Ideal World, the Liar Ensemble makes background music for the game, but something like that music I would like to see more of in the game instead to replace these kind of more modern stock music sounding tracks. But that's just obviously like a wish. That's not something that I necessarily expect them to do. If you're interested in hearing what I'm talking about, I have put a link to the Liar Ensemble's webpage below and their album is available to stream and or buy on most major music platforms. Overall, I would highly, highly recommend this game, especially for anyone who loved the Impressions games and has played them so much that they want to try something new. I'd also recommend this in general for people who like history and archaeology, because there is that kind of teaching element of it, but in a different way than you've been taught before, as well for anybody who likes city building, Sims types games. There's obviously, like I said, a few differences between the games that might put off some people initially, but I do think that you should really give it a try, especially since you can see the amount of effort that these guys went into making this game. And I think that they did a really incredible job pulling it off for two people. As I said at the beginning, if this review has piqued your interest, there is a link below to go and buy the game on Steam if you'd like to, but it's not an affiliate link, so I don't make money off of it. If you'd like some other suggestions of archeology span themed video games, I do have a another video on this topic that you can either watch here or the link is in the description below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to support me, please subscribe. Is this the kind of game that you would like to try? Have I piqued your interest? Have you already tried it by the time that you watched this game? What did you think of the game? Do you have any suggestions for other similar games that I can try reviewing? Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you next time. Bye!